Hey everyone, in today's episode, we're going to learn how to use the batch cam script in 3ds Max to render multiple cameras with little or no supervision. We're going to start by downloading the script from scriptspot.com. I'm going to leave the link in the description. Then, drag and drop the script in one of the 3ds Max viewports. There are no additional settings to install, but we need to add it to one of our toolbars. Right click on an empty space and select Customize. Then, in the toolbar tab, change the category to Sergo Pregosia and drag this into a toolbar. If you want to know more about how to create toolbars, you can see my toolbars video in this link. Batch Camera Render has similar settings to the ones we learned in my previous video for Batch Render, but it also includes additional functionality and quality of life options that can be really helpful for most scenes. One of the first changes that we're going to notice is that after opening the script, all the cameras will be included automatically in the camera list. The Add button is going to create a duplicate of the highlighted camera, and we can use the Remove button to delete it. This is really useful if we want to use the same camera but with different settings. To add additional cameras to the Batch Camera Render script, we need to create a new camera in our scene. Then press the Refresh button. This will automatically add any new cameras you have created or remove the cameras that you have deleted. To select the cameras, we can left click them. We can also use Ctrl plus left click to select multiple cameras or use the Unselect All button to select or deselect all cameras. This can help us to change the settings to one or more cameras at the same time. With the camera selected, we're going to start by setting up the output size. We can change it using one of the predefined sizes or we can also use a custom size or aspect ratio. We can also use the set button to copy the settings and paste it to another camera using the get button. In case we want to get back to the default undefined settings, we can click the clear button. After this, we need to select the frame range. The settings are similar to the ones that we can find in the render setup common parameters. For still images, I like to use single or frames and use range for animations or sequences. The next section is the render output. Here, we can select the output path and file format for the images by pressing the file button. One advantage of this script is that we can change the name or format of the file using the file name but. It is also possible to change or add a new folder using the folder section. If you're doing the configuration of multiple cameras, I recommend using the special keywords to automatically get the names of the cameras and folders. This can save you a lot of time. Press the Scene Touch button to see the supported keywords. For example, we can change the output path for the file name to project name, camera name, date, .ehr. This is going to create a new EHR file with the project name plus the camera name plus the date for each of the selected cameras. We can also add for the folder the keyword camera name. This is going to create a new folder with the name of the camera. I also recommend to leave the path of each of the render elements empty all the time. This way, the render elements will use the main output path selected in the batch render dialog or render setup. This is really important to avoid overwriting the files or even errors when rendering multiple cameras. One of the best settings we have in this script is the light assignment. In this section, we can assign and force on or off different lights, allowing for more flexibility and speed in our workflow. For example, we can set up the sun as a solo light. This is going to render this camera with just the sun and turn off all the other lights. This also ignores the configuration of the light force section. The light force on and off section can help us to select which lights we want on or off for this camera. For example, we can select a few lights on for one camera and off for a different camera. Before we press the render button, we need to activate the cameras we're using for batch render using the check box next to the name. It's also possible to check or uncheck all using the uncheck all button. After selecting the cameras, press the render button to start the rendering. Batch render is going to start rendering each of the cameras selected one after the other using the current open 3ds Max file. One disadvantage of this process is that we can't render multiple 3ds Max files and if we have a crash, it's really difficult to backtrack the error. To solve this, if you're working with a small render farm or even one computer, like the following example, I recommend using Backburner 
as a free and easy way to solve it. After you have done the back burner configuration and connected the slave to the monitor, we just need to select Net Render in the Batch Render dialog and then press the Render button. And back burner monitor will take care of the rendering, opening a new 3ds Max instance for each job. This allows to render different Max files or even automatically restarting the render if there is a crash. We can also access the log to see what happened with the files. It is recommended to have one computer dedicated for back burner monitor, but I never had any issues in the past with this approach. It is also worth mentioning that it's also possible to use Deadline with up to two computers for free, but the setup can be a bit more complicated than the one for back burner. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the subscribe and like button. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.